higher order functions, or the idea that functions are values. So you can have a function that takes in ints or strings or another function, and it might return an int or a string or might even return an entire function object. So, okay, uh, we'll approach this in a series of five steps. We'll talk about how to pass a function. If you have a function that already exists and you want to pass it to a function, just some examples of doing that in Racket and JavaScript and Python and Java. Um, how to pass a function, uh, an anonymous function. So just like I can use 37 without having to name it and put it in a variable, uh, I can just pass 37 without having to sort in a variable and Well, I could pass a function without having to name the function. That's all we mean by anonymous functions. Um, we'll talk about writing the signature for these higher order functions and how, and then the, the real magic part, how do you yourself write a, a function that takes it? One of uh, a function as one of its inputs, okay, uh, and we'll see that in different languages, um, and we'll have a major digression on how Java implements that. It's harder in typed languages or languages where the programmer has to name the type, and then maybe I'll get around to um, showing functions that return new functions that didn't exist. This is that's the real interesting part of things, uh, but it's a f not as common a use case as these first four bullets are. So. Passing a function that already exists, I'll use as the poster child, sort. I have a list of items and I want to sort them. If I have a list of numbers, great. I want to sort them and I might want to sort them ascendingly, descendingly, or by some other criterion entirely, um, by how many digits they are, or alphabetically, or something weird like that. Um, yeah, so the sort function in Racket, you call sort and you give it the list that you want to sort and you give it uh, what is the sorting criterion. If you have two items, which one should come first? Okay, so we can go ahead and type this, and I haven't, in the bottom we see the, the output, but we'll go down here, and I'll call this, and sort, yeah, list of 371. If I go ahead and call that with the, instead of less than or equal, call it with a greater function, we'll get the list in descending order, okay? Um, but the same sort function can be used to sort strings. Strings don't compare with less than, they compare with a string comparison function. So we can go ahead and do that. So these are just examples and that's all there is to it. Uh, you want to pass a function, you want to pass it a list, and you, hey, you want to pass it a function? Hey, just give, if it's a function you already have defined and bound to this identifier, just, hey, give that identifier and it will pass the associated value. So the function itself is the value that's getting passed. Okay. By the way, I should mention we're going up to intermediate student uh, level in Racket. Uh, that's required. In beginning student, if you ever mention a function name and you didn't immediately proceed it by an open paren, it's probably an error for beginners. But now we're, well, we're inter at, least, at least intermediate. Um, here's a place where I mention a function, string less than or equal, and I didn't have an open paren immediately before that name. So I need to be in this higher language level to do this. Okay, so, um, yeah, suppose I want to go ahead and um, def sort a bunch of strings by length. Well, if I want to go ahead and define a function, you know, I, might, I made up a new function name here, to start, uh, string length less than or equal, um, so string length less than, uh, is the length of S1 less than the length of S2? Well, I, I could go ahead and do that, and I can, here's a list, and I'll sort by this new function that I just barely defined a moment ago in the preceding line. And I can do that just fine. And we see here, we haven't sorted alphabetically or reverse alphabetically, it goes now by the length, shortest strings first. Okay, so you have a list of puppy objects, or Powerpuff Girl objects. Yeah, you want to sort them and you have set your own criterion for sorting them? Great, just pass sort a function that will take in two Powerpuff Girls and say which one should come earlier in the list. That's enough for sort to do its work. It doesn't really care about anything else about Powerpuff Girls or its fields. So, okay. Um, not much to say. In JavaScript, you can do this as well. Uh, do this as well. Here's an example. Uh, so by default in JavaScript, if you just call sort, racket sort requires you to pass the comparator operation. Uh, in JavaScript, it uses less than by default, or less than equal. 
Um, so you can do something like you know array of three seven one dot sort. Um, it's a method, so you say dot sort because we're object oriented. Cool. Um, great. So I can do that. Or since less than or equal is actually defined on strings in JavaScript, I can just go ahead and call sort and not pass it something. If I do want to pass the comparison function in, I can do that as well. So sort has an in JavaScript, sort has an optional parameter, the one that's required in, in Racket. So I could um, have a function here that says, hey, go ahead and uh, compare. Oh, this should be, did I mean compare two nums? I think I totally misspelled that. Hooey, how embarrassing. Compare two nums. Um, and this actually is the same uh, mechanism that Java uses. You, The thing that we actually pass to sort is not a function that says, hey, here's two numbers. Is this less than or that? Uh, it says, hey, here's two numbers. If it's less than, return a negative number. If it's if the first is greater than the second, return a positive number. And if they're equal, return zero. Uh, Java uses that in its compare to method and its compare to a class that we'll talk about in a moment. Um, so you may have seen that concept before. Let me just hop in here. I always, myself, I always forget, hey, does negative mean, you know, negative means which one is smaller than which other, okay? Uh, and so I think the way to think of it is by a difference. So when I say compare two of three and seven, it's talking to about three minus seven, okay? And so negative means the first one is smaller because three minus seven You'll get a negative number if the first number is smaller. So compare of a minus compare to of a and b is like think of that as a minus b. If a minus b is negative, then a must have been smaller. Uh, and so sometimes that's uh, in the written as so. So if I see when I see compare to or compare of a b, I think or rather. If compare of a b is less than zero, I think if a minus b is less than zero. And similarly, uh, if a dot compare to of b. So if you're in Java and it's object oriented, same thing. I think if a minus b is less than zero. Okay. That's just my mnemonic for remembering, hey, negative means which one is smaller again, and likewise. It's just think of it as the difference and in the same order. Okay, back to your regularly scheduled recording. But yeah, you can go ahead and make a new array and then call sort on it, and that's valid JavaScript code that compiles. I put it in the right line if you want to actually go to a JavaScript interpreter and copy and paste that line. After copy and pasting this line, you can certainly do that. Okay, um, JavaScript, want to compare by length? Here's, oh, write a function. Oh, no, I, I did want to compare to to. <laughs> now I remember. Uh, because compare to is the standard Java name for this method, compare to. So a compare to for nums, or a compare to for strings, or a compare to by length of strings. So I call it compare to length. Yeah, and I just returned the length of the first one minus the length of the next one. Um, and then I can go ahead and support uh, sort things by length, just like we had done back in Racket. Okay, so almost word for word the same as the Racket. Uh, it's really handy to be able to pass a function to sort. Yeah, you like that. Um, how do you do it in Python? Um, so Python... Uh, I've been using the list constructor explicitly when I did this up here in JavaScript. By the way, in JavaScript, you don't have to say new array, open paren 371. Uh, you could just say square brackets 371. That calls the array constructor for you in JavaScript. Okay. Um, in Python, they only for square brackets mean lists, not arrays. Uh, and there is no sort of explicit constructor. There's only this shorthand, this literal shorthand. So, okay. Anyway, and there in Python, the method is called sorted. There's a method called sort uh, on list objects, and it's a method, and it actually mutates the list. 
I like sort it's a static method just a function you pass it in the list and you get back a whole new list so we can go ahead and say something like this in Java uh, what if you again want to sort by some specialized criterion by like the string length it's a little bit different in Python slightly different you don't pass in a function that takes in two strings and will tell you the result that's sort of a very natural thing to have for sort um, but it's also not uncommon that you can just say, hey, when I'm sorting a bunch of items, um, tell you what, I'll give you a function that converts the item into a number, okay? And then sort the, the objects, okay? But when you're comparing two objects, call that function that converts the object into a number uh, on each of them to see which one should come earlier, okay? So here's an example, len. Len is the very standard Python function for the length of a string or the length of any sequence. Um, and so you can say sorted and you pass the list and then if you have some specialized criteria you can say key equals and then put whatever function you want to pass there. So it's a little bit different, it's not a function that takes in two items and compares them, it's a function that takes in one item and gives back a number for which you can use for sorting. So, okay, um, so how do we do this in Java? And we'll end up this video with an example of doing this in Java. Uh, at least in Java 8, and we'll come back later, we'll talk about how this actually translates and this is syntactic sugar for what happened in Java 5 and, and earlier. Um, but we'll go ahead and Java, I need to import a few classes here. In Java, you can sort, the, there is a method sorted that takes in a list, returns, actually takes in a stream and returns a stream. So uh, if I have a list containing 371, I can construct it like this in Java list.of371. Um, that's a very nice list constructor uh, added in Java 8, I believe. Uh, but then I have to convert it to a stream, and then I can call sorted on it. And that gives me back another stream. So if I want to get a list back, I need to go ahead and convert that stream to a list, which is what this calling the dot collect method on it is. So, whew. Okay, so this sorts a list using the built in default compare to. Okay, so it's a list of capital I integers. It will use the compare to method that's built in for integers. Um, if I give it a list of strings, everything else is the same. It will use string has compare to written. It implements comparable. Uh, it has a compare to method, so it uses that for sorting. If you want to pass your own sort criterion, okay, like compare to by length, like we had before, I'll write that same sort of thing here. Um, and yeah, then I can go ahead and say list dot of the strings, and then uh, dot, oops, mistyped that, convert that to a stream, then call sorted, and again, sorted, if you look at the Java documentations for stream, the sorted method on streams, can optionally take, there's a version that takes in nothing and a version that takes in a function, um, and again, that should be a function that takes in two strings in this case and says negative one, zero, or positive one, depending on what order that it should be then. Okay, so yeah, the fact that I've converted to a stream and then I probably, if I'm using this, I want to deconvert it from a stream, uh, gosh, makes this a little bit more tedious in Java, but hey, that's why we use Java because you get to type lots of extra keywords and yeah, okay. Um, Okay, so those are examples of how to call a function in Java that wants to be given another function, okay, where we have a named function. Um, I think I'd, I have one other example I wanted to talk about uh, in general. Yeah, when we did Big Bang, we actually did the same thing as well uh, in our game, in our video game. We actually passed in a, a function draw world, and we passed in a function update world, okay, uh, and handle world or on tick or whatever. Um, and in general, it, you do this in GUIs all the time. You pass a callback. The callback is a function that you give to somebody else. You're like, hey, operating system, here's the callback. That is, when some event happens, I'm going to give you the function, and I want you to actually invoke that function, which is what happened in sort. We passed some function to sort. Who actually called string less than or equal to? Ah, sort was the one who actually bothered calling that function. We didn't call it ourselves, we just wrote it here and passed that function along. Okay. 
So next we'll go on. The next step will be we'll talk about anonymous functions, which is a pretty minor step from what we already have, but it introduces a new syntax.